right, we're about eight hours into our drive. We're uh, on our way to Jacksonville, Florida, and then we're gonna cut back down south towards Sea-Doo, where we're gonna pick up two skis. We went with naturally aspirated, obviously, for the fuel mileage. Even though a supercharged ski with more horsepower is gonna get us up faster, we knew stopping for gas more often was gonna slow us down more than anything else. So you might be wondering what exactly is the Watercraft Journal Long Haul. We published an article from two Florida riding groups who crossed the state over two days. They had a big group, about 12, 13 skis, and it took them about six hours one way. Well, we knew that it could be done a little quicker if you weren't stopping for gas and if you had some faster skis and if you brought a lot of fuel with you. So, what if we could do both back and forth in one day? We don't think there's a standing speed record right now. Uh, I don't think anyone's been crazy enough to even try this. So, we're really hoping to make it work. Now, Kev has warned that certain locks operate at certain times. And we only have a very small window when we leave in the morning and before we get back because the locks will close before five o'clock and we can't ride skis more than a half an hour before sunrise, especially without any sort of marker lights, which jet skis don't have. That, of course, there's the uh, St. Lucie Lock. St. Lucie Lock operates every two hours, regardless of how much traffic is waiting. That gave us very specific times that we need to be there. We came up with a route that comes up to just, a, just under 300 miles. It's 140 miles each way, give or take a little bit. This is our experiment. Hopefully it goes well. Otherwise, you're gonna watch us fail in spectacular fashion. Took just a little bit over 12 hours, but we made it here to Melbourne, Florida. We are at Sea Doo's secret headquarters at Look Marketing. Actually very excited to uh, show off that we hooked up on a pair of GTIs. Both of them are 155s, obviously one's a wake model, the other one is the Limited in the very cool 2015 uh, Maldives Blue. Being able to both have 155 is great. That means that we're both equally tethered. Pretty excited. Both have equal amounts of storage. Uh, same, uh, just shy of, of 16 gallon fuel tank. So we've been uh, uh, calculating that in our, in our ride. We are looking at the sky turning gray and it's already starting to sprinkle. So we're pretty sure we're gonna be driving through some ugly stuff, but picking them up late tonight means that we don't have to do it early tomorrow. Doesn't mean we get to sleep in, but we get a head start on getting everything ready for tomorrow. Alright, we're here. We've made it 1100 miles later. I'm exhausted and cranky and I haven't eaten, but I'm here with Kev Hemingway and I'm here with Bob from Cool PwC Stuff and we're going to hook up our skis right here. We have some really neat stuff that's uh, going to be going on the back of our GTIs. We got four three gallon gas cans going on all on everything and we actually have a cooler. The empty one will also be filled with two uh, five gallon jerry cans so that's set up and we're gonna put them right here right on the back for all you guys who think a pvc rack that you glue together is gonna hold i mean i'm sure like some of you guys have had some really good luck with your your plumbing pipe racks um stop it like seriously just just stop it's bad and actually have one made out of metal um Metal's better than plastic. So the cool PWC stuff racks are uh, pretty trick. What are they made out of? Stainless steel. Uh -huh. Since stainless steel and then we powder coat. Oh, you powder coat. Absolutely. Okay. Fuel is always an issue with a lot of skis. And, right. Uh, you're able to, we've got a bracket that we put right on the outside of the, the rack itself that uh, houses the roto packs. And uh, those are, yeah. the reason why we kind of went that, that direction is because you can actually stack them. 
So these yeah. are two three gallon ones we've stacked. Yeah, through. that's awesome. That looks stout, man. That's actually really cool. All right, here we are. It's about 6.15 in the morning. You can see sunrise is coming up. Uh, we're still a little early. They're gonna, not gonna let us out, but we're just staging. We're getting everything ready for the skis. So we're just uh, getting our GPSs ready. We have all of our wave, waypoints planned. And uh, you'll know before I do right now if we made it or not, which is a terrifying thought. But, all right, rock and roll, here we go. First lock of the day, just uh, waiting for it to open. Getting to scroll through some of the uh, CDU ITC uh, tunes. The eco mode really helps out when you're in the slow 25 mile an hour manatee zones. And then we keep it in touring mode for most of the time. Although sport will get us some more top speed. Again, we're all about fuel consumption. Uh, it's not terribly sexy, but you know, we're actually gonna make it rather than stopping for gas, which is good, especially because we're fumbling with cameras and getting Kev used to high tech skis with brakes and different tuning modes. He's not used to a ski that you don't have to put oil on the gas. Don't tell him I said that. We're at our second lock, or third lock. No, second. Second, yep. Second lock. The Oratana lock. Then we have one more lock to go. It's only about five mile, or ten miles down the lane. Uh, that takes us to uh, the portal to Lake Okeechobee. Uh, thankfully, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, um, so we're making really good time. We're halfway through Okeechobee. It's kicking our butt. It's about anywhere between two to four foot. We got some wind. The scary thing is that it's 1040 and we need to be at the lock at before 11. That means we got to haul butt. Well, we made it the lock. Unfortunately, this is not the lock we needed to be at at 11 o'clock. So we might be changing our plans a little bit, considering that we are a good 25 minutes away from the lock we should have been at about 20 minutes ago. We got some good news. It turns out that the Port Lucy lock is gonna let us through, even though we are about an hour late. We're gonna to go to the marina, get some gas, fill it all up, and then uh, head straight back, because that's crazy. into our first bit of rain and it's a lot like being in front of a paintball machine gun. It's uh, pretty brutal. Thankfully I bought an old helmet but anyhow uh, thought it'd be smart to bring it along plus you know to mount a GoPro to the top of it. I already had the mount but uh, we're cutting it close. It's already 4.15. We might actually pull this stinking thing off. We'll just have to see. Well, we tried. We 
went as fast as we could, topped out, went through rain, hauled, 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 and showed up at the last lock 15 minutes before closing. And uh, they were already closed. Yeah, they closed early. No one was there, power was off, rang the bell, we called the office, nobody picked up. We got real far, we got real close, we had a lot of really good lucky breaks. Unfortunately, time was not on our side, and the government screwed us.